Good evening and welcome. This is Sports Report. I'm Andy Michaud. This is Matt Hatfield and it was a dark and stormy night all the way across the state. There were animals lining up by twos in front of a lot of stadiums, but football was played. Even with all the nasty weather, we got some games in around the state of Virginia. And we start things off at Warner Stadium where the undefeated Lafayette Rams with a record of 4-0 take on the York Falcons, surging at 3-1 fresh off that win over Pocosin in the previous week as Doug Pereira's team now trying to knock off the giant in the Bay Rivers district that has won 27 straight against district foes. York in the white. York getting things started early. It is Ramsey Hyatt to Darius Reynolds. All the way downfield, a 40-yard gain all the way up to midfield. A much-needed completion there to start things off with the freshman signal caller. Hyatt drops back to throw again and finds his man Isaiah Hawkins as York has passed midfield on that stingy Lafayette defense. Fourth and one. They're going for it. They're, no, they're not going to get it. That is Campbell getting pushed back by the Lafayette defense. That's enough yardage. No more for you. Uh, Rams very stifling against the run. And now they give it to Part of the twin combo of the Craig and Brinks. That's Joey Craig and Brinks, the senior. We'll see his brother Caleb, the junior, later on. Give it to Joey once, give it to him twice. Almost gets in, and you know what that means? A third time, perhaps. Well, you know, we did it twice. Seemed to work okay. Well, you know, let's try it again. Craig and Brink to the outside. This time he's into the goal, and that's a touchdown. It is a 7 0 lead for Lafayette after a penalty on a punt extended that drive. And Andy Lynn's Rams rushing attack even more vaunted now with the fullback John Douglas. He's a bruiser back from injury. They now have four different options they can go to to get over 100 yards rushing. And sometimes they'll throw it too as Chase Pine finds in the flat his man. That's Kyle Johnson, 19 yards for the touchdown pass. And Lafayette, which had some trouble in the first series defensively, now cruising up 13 to nothing. Ensuing kickoff, always dramatic. This will be Hezekiah Grimsley, who takes it deep in his own territory, and now he's not so deep. He's out, he's still going. He's across into York territory, and they finally get him. Big return for Grimsley. If we know anything about Grimsley, he is dangerous on punts, returns on interceptions, and so is Chase Pine, the University of Pittsburgh commit. It's a fake punt, and he's gonna move the chains for Lafayette. That's what happens when your quarterback's also a punter. No, he's not a punter. This guy right here. That is Kagan Brink. And it's a fumble. York recovers it. Big takeaway for the York defense, but Lafayette's oh, going to come right back and get it. Look who it is. It's Grimsley. He can catch kickoffs. He can catch passes from the other team. And Pine can take two-yard runs. He's into the end zone. And it is a 19 to nothing lead for Lafayette. Lafayette's not just thinking a win here, Andy. They're thinking shutout. York trying to end that here on the special teams play. Oh. It'll be a loose ball. Someone's going to pick it up. Graham thought he uh, had it. Oh, nope. someone else thought I, he got it. Nope. It's going to be scooped up by Caleb Craig and Brink. There's the other Craig and Brink. Yeah, so many guys that a shot at that. Somebody pick it up. Here is Pine firing over the middle. That's the other Craig and Brink. That is Joey Craig and Brink. 22 yards for the touchdown. Lafayette pouring it on right now. 33 to nothing. One more score to the running clock and go home happy. And some ball security issues here for York here. That's not good because it puts you in second and long, third and long. And right here, Luke Gilbert just gets drilled by Pine. You see why he's going to play his college football at linebacker in the ACC for Pitt. And it's ball handling problems all night for York. This was a close game at halftime. Only 14 to nothing. And then the problems continued for York all second half. And here's another problem, a problem named Grimsley. We talked about him a couple of times on this island. Another touchdown, another interception, second of the night for Grimsley. 40 to nothing is the final in this one as Lafayette turns what was a close game into a blowout. The 24-yard pick six will be the icing on the cake as you see Kyle Johnson with two touchdowns. Chase Pine accounts for three scores while York is held to a season-low 98 yards offense, dropping to three and two on the season. Ball handling problems all night long. Pocosin in the Bay Rivers District, 47 to over Smithfield, 47 to 6. Yeah, Smith and up to a season low 23 yards through the air as Freeman and Pulteney combined for 264 yards on the ground for the Islanders. As they move on in the Bay Rivers District, it is Grafton with a two point nail biter over New Kent, 14 to 12. Oh, Matt McLeod's Clippers get the squeaker there. DJ Dobbins leading the way, the quarterback with 102 yards rushing and a touchdown for Grafton. More action. This time we're going to head to the Southeastern District. Big time schools, big matchups there. And it's still raining. 
It's still pouring everywhere you go. Grassfield, Western Branch in Chesapeake. This game would actually be delayed by almost an hour as referees showed up late and there was no <laughs> scoreboard working for this game. Grassfield coming in at 3-1, and one, Western Branch 2-2. Two and two, A much needed win for the Bruins to keep pace in that Southeastern District title chase. See the sloppy conditions. Ray C. Lewis on the kick return. Look how clean his jersey is. See how white that is? Oh, not so white anymore, but a big return from Ray C. Lewis. Well, the Bruins are hitting on special teams tonight. Jacob Wilson back to throw, and uh-oh, it's intercepted there by Grassfield Fred Venom with the pick. Marty Asprey loving that. Even though he might not be enjoying the conditions, his team has a chance to get on the board first. It's always tough to pass in these situations, and here Big B is going to do it. He's going to fake off, throw it outside. He finds Terrell Scott. He is hit by Tyron Morrison to save a touchdown, but a good pick up there. And now Grassville with Big B under center is going to hand it off right up the middle. Oh, big Go Scott there. Five, six yard touchdown run for the Grassville Grizzlies as their running game getting working here. The extra point will be good there for Cole Gibson and Grassville on top first. But Western Branch, the running game, they will not be detoured. Here is Bird on the up the middle to the outside. And then it's just a wet racetrack. They do catch him. Holloway catches him, but now he's already in the end zone. That's seven point catch. Seven to seven tie game after. This. Now it's 7 7. If you haven't heard, Andy, Bird is the ward as he's been running well all year long for Western Branch. Had almost 100 yards rushing against King's Fork in a loss. And this is great weather if you're a duck. As you've got the umbrellas out, it is just pouring here. You can barely see the opposing players if you're wearing a Western Branch uniform. And right there, Keith Bryant did not want to see Grant Holloway, who shoves him out of bounds there for a loss. He knocked him right through the umbrella. This is, yeah, this is not so good weather for, for Bears and Bruins. We had Grizzlies, it's bear on bear violence. They don't like the rain. But this is a pretty good bunt return. That's Ray C. Lewis again. He gets to the outside. I don't know how he saw it in the rain, but he does see one thing. He sees the goal line down the sidelines, cuts back to the middle and scores. Ray C. Lewis, a 57-yard punt return touchdown. And that could be a game changer if the extra point by Gibson goes through. They're up 14 to 7. It does as the kickers are getting it done in the rain. Maybe they can sign one of these guys up for the NFL as much as they're struggling here. But look at this. You go one oh, way, you come back the other way with Bird. Bird, seven yard touchdown run. We keep showing all these extra points because it's very tough to kick in the rain and they could mean big things. Also, foreshadowing, pay attention to the kickers. This one is up and good. 14 all at that time. So four for four for our kickers here. Big Big going back to throw and he is picked off by the junior safety, Xavion Hunt. And Xavion Hunt's thinking pick uh -oh. six and when he get there until uh -oh. he is tackled by Shawan Goodman. A crucial touchdown saving stop there for Grassfield. That's a big play right there. Never giving up on the play. Here's Wilson. He's going back to throw. He is finding, uh oh, he's finding the wrong guy. That is Daniel Goodwin with the interception. And back comes Grassfield. Is somebody going to get him? And finally, they do get him out of bounds. They just trading interceptions right now. Sometimes when your offense isn't clicking and you got bad weather conditions, you have to win with defense and special teams. And you also have a guy who can make the play in Grant Holloway. He catches the screen pass and goes 33 yards, putting the Grizzlies in field goal range. That, you can win with Grant Holloway. That's, that's a pretty good way to, to put that. Here is Higgins. Higgins to the outside, adding some more yards to a possible game-winning field goal attempt. Just a couple, but it's enough. Here's the kick. 34-yarder Cole Gibson is good in the rain. and a Grassfield comes away with it. 17-14, the victory for the Grizzlies, who bounce back after getting really beat pretty badly by Indian River last week. They do, and Western Branch falling to 2-3 and three despite seeing both of the running backs, Keith Bryant and Brandon Burr, rushing for over 100 yards in that one. Southeastern District, we roll on. It is Oscar Smith, 20-3 over Hickory. Tigers led 7-3 at the break, but Courtney Johnson's 126 yards rushing and two scores helped them pull away to stay undefeated. And when we come back, Andy, we've got more high school football highlights and also our Cox at practice with the Indian River Braves. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Cox Sports Report. Welcome back to the Sports Report. A lot of games had to be shuffled around because of the weather. One of the teams that had to do some shuffling was the Indian River Braves, as now they are getting ready for a huge matchup in the Southeastern next week against Oscar Smith. Matt, you had a chance to catch up to these Braves at practice to see what goes on.
We're here in Chesapeake at Indian River High School, where the resurgent Braves are coming off their first playoff victory since 2007. Indian River went just 1-9 overall in 2013, but in Coach Glenwood Farabee's first season at the helm, the program went 8-4 overall. Now they have their sights set on an even deeper playoff run in 2015. Coach, year one, you guys go eight and four, make the playoffs. Now into season two, what's the goals and expectations for this program? Same goals. Uh, obviously, the kids talk about state championships a lot, uh, so that's the ultimate goal. But our, our main goal is to take one game at a time uh, and try to gel with the new guys that we got and uh, get better each week. What have you learned about this year's team, and how is it different from last year's group? Um, we got a lot more. We got a lot more talent than we had last year. Obviously, you know, with the guys coming over. Uh, and the thing that I've learned as a coach, you got to learn to manage. You got to learn to manage the the temperaments and the egos of some of these kids uh, with all these offers. Uh, but pretty much, we're aggressive on defense. Uh, offensively, we're still trying to gel and click you know, with the new guys that we got. Uh, Tyans and introduced to a new offense, so he's still trying to you know find his uh, niche in it. Uh, so I think by the middle of the season, we'll hit our stride. Tyree, you're the quarterback of this ship at Indian River. Uh, what are the, I guess, challenges and expectations that come with that? You know, quarterback always the leader of the team, pick the tempo up, always got to be encouraging, have a great mindset, never down, always got to be able to pick the team up, and I think I can do that for this team. Indian River was struggling for a long time. Coach Fairby comes in last year, and you guys make the playoffs. What are the things that he kind of hit home for you guys to, I guess, fulfill some of the talent and potential you guys know you have? Yes, sir. Yeah, he came in last year, turned the program around, and he really – Drew in as the importance of leadership, hard work, dedication, and doing what you got to do, the little things to make the team great. Savante coming over from Oscar Smith to Indian River. How's the process been for you adjusting to this new school? Um, you know, love and hate, you know, with love by my teammates, you know, hate from out, the outsiders, but end of the day, it don't really matter as long as my teammates, you know, we play for each other, so it's all matters. What's the strength of this football team? Where are you guys best at? Defense. Is it? Yeah. Why is that? Um, you know, I think defense, you know, it sparks the offense. Like, we might get the ball first, you know, we don't really drive the ball. But as soon as we get on defense, hit that three and out, offense get the ball, start moving, we start grooving. And then, like, when I make a big play on defense, I see the offense, Eric, they want to make their big play, and that's how it really gets to rolling. Jaquan, uh, talk about it. I know you're anxious to get out here for the first time this season. Uh, senior season, are you excited about it? Yes, sir. Um, I've been ready to get back out there since the beginning. I know like we went through a little consequence with me and last year, but like I said, I had to pay the price for what happened last year and ready to come out here and fight for my team. And what's the identity of this group right now? Do you guys know how good you guys can be yet? We know how good we can be, but we're not trying to basically say how good we can be. So we don't want to make it sound that we're cocky. We just want to take each game day by day and basically see how everything goes with it. Junior season for you guys at Indian River, you've been a part of this program when it was struggling, now it's been having success. What's the two con uh, contrasts been like for you? Well, it's been it's been crazy. I mean, uh, I remember when I, my freshman year, I was doing a lot of things on my own, learning the game now. So now I'm getting used to it. I'm, I'm playing a whole different position now, um, getting more defensive reps, more offensive reps at receivers. So it has been a big process for me. Have you seen a difference from last year's team to now? Obviously, you got a couple new guys to go with you, but what's what's different about this team? You've noticed just a couple games in. Uh, the mindset. Uh, last year was more of we need to get to the playoffs. We need to uh, get to the playoffs. Um, this year we're like uh, we're gonna go all the way. So we're gonna fight. We're gonna work hard every day to get there to get our dream. Be sure to follow the Braves and their journey to the postseason all year long right here on Sports Report for Cox at Practice. I'm Matthew Hatfield. So many memories of getting pounded into the dirt on that practice field at Indian River. <laughs> C.D. Hilton, a winner in four overtime, surviving Freedom 34 to 33 as Jared Austin ran for four touchdowns. Edwin Ponce Villanueva with the game-winning extra point there. We continue out west in the Concord District, 24 to 14, 10 point victory for Robinson over Chantilly. Sean Foncha with three touchdown runs to propel the Rams to victory. A couple other scores around the state of Virginia in the River Ridge District. It was Blacksburg defeating Hidden Valley in a shootout 51 to 37. Isaac Johnson with five touchdown passes, 286 yards through the air, while Case and Bennett had three touchdown runs in the loss for Hidden Valley. It was also still raining in the River Ridge District, in case you were wondering. A couple of their games had to be rescheduled. Chulaski County, not one of them. 21-14, seven-point win over Patrick Henry, who looked pretty good last week. Uh, Ten sacks for that Pulaski County defense in victory there. Northside, 42-14 over Allegheny. 
Uh, Corey Williams, three touchdown runs for the Vikings. Josh Hardister threw for 126 yards in a score, while Allegheny was led by Matt Patterson's 161 yards passing and a touchdown in the loss. When we return, Andy will check out the Green Run Stallions taking on the Salem Sun Devils. Plus, we'll interview Rod Johnson from VirginiaPreps.com. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Cox Sports Report. And welcome back to Sports Report as we head to the beach for a big matchup between Green Run and Salem. Salem ranked number nine in the state in the 5A division. This one, yeah, it's sloppy out there as well. Green Run has been eliminated each of the last two years by Salem in the playoffs, and they're hoping to exact some measure of revenge here in the regular season, but that's not going to be the way you want to do it, as you see. Tayon Reynolds and Malcolm Wyndham, they're getting it. It'll be Wyndham coming up with the football. Salem's defense with a takeaway early on. Did we say it was sloppy out there? You see the puddles splashing up and the scoreboard gets hard to read. Not much going on offensively in this one until Malik Butts gets to the outside at three-yard touchdown run. Finally, somebody gets on the board in the second quarter. 7-0 Salem. Green Run's had trouble stopping Butts since he was a sophomore. Ran for over 200 yards on them in the playoffs. Green Run trying to counter behind Breland Cyphers. He was player of the week just a few weeks ago, but Cam Butts and that Salem defense, they're not having any of it there. Big time defensive cheerleaders holding each other so they don't get blown away in the wind. All of them trying to stay dry. Scoreboards having problems as well as we head to the third quarter. Still 7-0. Oh, bad snap. Devontae Williams picks it up. Devontae Williams gets to the outside. They're going to tackle him right here. Oh, wait. They're not tackling him. They're not tackling him. He's still running. He's too slippery. He's wet. Nobody can grab a hold of him. Williams. Instead of a 15-yard loss, picks up a 7-yard gain. Oh, what grit and determination by Devontae Williams in that Salem running game. Green run now. They're knocking on the door, but oh. that Salem defense is laying the wood. That's Morris Vaughn with the big-time hit. The junior, I think he hits harder than Mo Vaughn that played baseball. Oh, Cyphers is saying maybe, maybe, maybe we should block that guy or something. Maybe, maybe a, good a new idea. strategy. Whew, seven to nothing, but Green Run's going to try to get on the board here with a field goal. But, ooh, and that win and that rain. Uh, Kickers have a tough time, and that one's plenty, no good. Plenty of distance on that one. Missed it off to the left, the 34-yarder. Still 7-0 as we get later into the third quarter, and it's going to be Malik Williams, and that is going to be a very long run. They are not going to catch him. 50-yard touchdown run from Malik Williams, and Salem gets back on the board. Extra point, they had to move over because of a puddle in the middle of the field. They kicked the PAT around the puddle, and it's now 14 to nothing. Salem on top. That combination of Williams and Butts enough here for Salem to get a two-score advantage here. Salem trying to make it out of reach here as they will hand it off here. They pitch out to Williams. He'll get inside the five-yard line, but the Green Run defense is going to hang tight here as Salem is knocking on the board, knocking on the door to try to put it away here. It'll end up being third and goal, fourth and goal, and Green Run is going to hang tough here against the run. You see Williams getting nothing there. Kudos to Sherrod Harrell with that tough stop. Big defense there as Green Run tries to keep it to a two-score game and sparks some kind of a comeback. Time left here in the fourth quarter as we move on in Salem trying to get things going. Oh, trickeration, halfback, pass. Not gonna work, knocked away. We call that 801 halfback pass. Yeah, you figure you have to throw it since it's, you can't run in there in this conditions here. Let's see if that'll work. Five minutes to go. Still, I'm trying to run out the clock here, and you see they will hand it off here, but the ball will come loose. I'll tell you what, hanging on that football is like hanging on to a grease pig in these conditions with the rain and the mud and all the muck there. It'll be Green Run emerging with it. Kyrie Brown Zellner with the recovery. Problem for Green Run was just could not muster up enough offense in this one, Andy, as the Salem defense was too suffocating in this ball game. A lot of tough conditions out there. That is your final as Salem sort of holds on to the slop fest on the beach, 14 to nothing over Green Run. Vaughn leading the defensive effort with nine tackles, a couple for, a couple for loss, while Green Run was a combined one of 14 on third and fourth down. Just not going to cut it if you plan on beating a team the caliber of Salem in the Beach District. Well, we've got coming up Rod Johnson of VirginiaPreps.com. He's going to fill us in with all this rain going on, Andy, about the teams, the players, everybody to watch around the state of Virginia. He's got the pulse on it right here on Sports Report.
Here with Rod Johnson, the state football editor of VirginiaPreps.com. Okay, Rod, let's dive right into it. Who are the teams you're keeping your eye on the most this year? Well, I think in the Tidewater area, you start with uh, Lake Taylor and Ocean Lakes, the two defending champions. Both of them look very, very strong this year, uh, coming out of the gate very well. Uh, outside of that, Oscar Smith is always a team you have to pay attention to. Uh, Phoebus, early in the season, has risen to the number one spot in our rankings. Uh, so I think kind of the traditional powers are still the traditional powers. Uh, Hampton looks to be uh, playing good football right now as well, so I'll be interested to see how they do as the year goes along. And of course, you look at uh, in Northern Virginia and Roanoke, some teams that hope to win championships along with the squads here in Tidewater. Who are the ones to keep an eye out for up there? Uh, I think in the 2A, Class 2A, Glenver won the state championship last year. They're still ranked number one this year. Had a couple struggles early, uh, but seem to be playing better now that they're into week two and three. Uh, I would also take a really close look at a Jefferson Forest team that I drove out and saw last week against uh, Magna Vista, who was the 3A champion last year. And Jefferson Forest beat them 53-20 to 20 and, and was really, really impressive doing it. Got a great running back named Navy Jones. Uh, so... That's a team I'm keeping a really close eye on. Lord Botata out there is playing very well uh, as well. So uh, 3A has been kind of the, maybe the most open. And 4A, you know, Jefferson Forest will make that run. I don't know how they'll stack up against Lake Taylor yet, but that's a long way away. Now we watch a ton of talented athletes on Friday nights showcase their skills here on Sports Report. But there's also some of these guys that we'll see not just play well on Friday nights, they're going to make splashes at the next level on Saturdays. Who are those guys? you got to start with Levante Taylor. Uh, I think uh, he's committed to Florida State, fantastic athlete, and a guy who competes at everything. Uh, whether He'll compete in an interview against you to ask you a better question than you asked him. I mean, he really goes hard at everything he does. Uh, Jaquan Yuli here at Indian River is committed to Alabama. Uh, anytime somebody makes that commitment, you expect big things out of them. Uh, Wayne Davis from Lake Taylor is committed to Ohio State. Same situation. When guys are going to those schools, they've kind of already passed the test as being winners at one level. It's just a matter of how they then develop at the next level against guys that are in the same class as them. Who are the guys you're watching out for that are juniors and sophomores, underclassmen, who will soon be making a big name for themselves? You know, Sean Mitchell at Oscar Smith is a three-year starter. It's hard to believe he's still a junior, uh, but he's a guy in the junior class who you have to pay attention to just because he's going to have four years as a starter at Oscar Smith. He's got three Division One offers, so uh, a kid that can make an impact at the next level. Uh, I'd also take a very, very close look at Devon Hunter here at Indian River. He's a five-star kid and somebody who is getting a lot of attention. You go over to Ocean Lakes, a pair of guys in Kalen LeBourne and Eric Crosby are both top-notch, top 50 in the country kind of players. And then sophomore year, I, Taraji Mitchell is a guy who's kind of separated himself early as one of those next level players coming up out of the class of what, 2018. Uh, so there's guys always coming around here. There you have it, the man with his pulse on the entire Commonwealth, Rod Johnson. Check out his work on virginiapreps.com. Thank you so much. Sure thing. And our player of the week for the second time goes to a guy named Daz. Daz Palmer from Lake Taylor, running back 23 carries, 309 yards, and three touchdowns as the Titans take down Granby 57 to 14. Once upon a time, that game was tied 7 all, but Lake Taylor <laughs> are just breezing as they run their winning streak to 20 games on the year, 30 against Eastern District opponents. That's impressive, man. We got a lot of impressive games coming up for next week. Some huge matchups all across. Everywhere, really, especially yeah. in the Southeastern. Especially in the Tidewater area, you've got three big Saturday games coming with Indian River Oscar Smith, followed by Hampton Phoebus and Ocean Lakes Bayside. It'll be October 10th, Indian River Oscar Smith, the 17th, Hampton Phoebus and the 24th, Bayside Ocean Lakes. But we're out of time for Andy Mashaw. I'm Matt Hatfield. We'll catch you next time right here on the Cox Sports Report.